I am Sweela Beckin, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring the little bell so you are notified when new videos drop. And I am a morose and somewhat sad rabbi from another planet today. I've just seen episode 5 of Game of Thrones. I still don't know what it's called. I think the Bells of King's Landing will be my guess. I saw the Bells of and the line was cut off. Maybe it's just the Bells. Uh, it kind of reminds me of uh, Quasimodo. The Bells, the Bells, and uh, the Bells do toll for Game of Thrones. This was a franchise killer. This was awful. This was deeply, deeply disappointing in pretty much every way. Yeah, it looked it, it looked pretty nice. Uh, shot well, realized well, but it was it was just so basic. They, I guess they subverted expectations by doing exactly what you expected. Uh, and is you know, I'm getting kind of sick of being reasonable. I, I, I whenever things look like they're going to tank, I sit on the fence and I go, no, you know, let me wait and see. Let me wait and see what they're going to do. Let me wait and see where they're going. Uh, I can't imagine fandom's going to be in any way divided on this. I think this is going to be universally hated. I think this is The Last Jedi. I think this is Doctor Who Season 11. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's this is um, much like... Okay, so we've got quite a history in fandom of really awful iterations of the objects of uh, of our love. Yeah, going back all the way, all the way back to Phantom Menace, you know, it, it took a... And with the Phantom Menace, we were so shocked and so surprised uh, how bad it was. It took about, what, three months? Maybe six months before we could say, oh, that was pretty darn awful. You know, when it happened with The Last Jedi, I uh, I didn't realise it as I was watching it. It took me about a day. Uh, Doctor Who, you know, I gave, I gave a fair crack to. I gave it, like... It wasn't until the fifth episode where I said that this is going to be utterly awful. Um, and same with this, you know, I like I, I was really surprised how upset people were with the Battle of Winterfell. And because uh, whilst I was watching it, I found it very satisfying. And I found uh, Arya's kill shot of the Night King very satisfying. It was only afterwards when I went, wait a minute, what does that mean? Um, and then last week, you know, we had the, the dragons being taken down, the dragon being taken down. This one, this one, sadly, I realized how disappointing and how awful it was as I was watching it. I didn't have, I didn't even have that, like, um, that latency, that lag effect anymore. Cause I'm so, I'm just so used to things tanking. For like, I, 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 yeah, just okay. You know what this is? I guess this is this is what happens when you have a creative genius who lovingly and and uh, crafts an incredibly intricate world uh, and characters and draws you in and makes you love them. And then you make a a television adaptation of them and you do it really well. And you work you work for that source material and you get you 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 reflect it. Uh, obviously, when you when you adapt from from one medium to another. It's different, and the, the, you lose things. You're not going to have that same depth. Uh, so I guess that's what happens. And then the source material runs out, and apparently there's a, uh, a conflict with um, the Dan and Dave, who do the series, and J.R. Martin. I don't think they're, they're on speaking terms anymore, because this is what happens when you have television writers finish off a, um, a breathtaking epic. And it's, it was just so basic. It was so banal. It was so predictable. It was so disappointing. It was so it was so um, dissatisfying. Everything about it was dissatisfying. I mean, I, okay, let's. Where do we start? I, I mean, uh, this is exactly. I mean, obviously, I haven't seen any spoilers at all. Uh, I just it's kind of so obvious that. Joss Snow's going to kill Daenerys next next episode and have to sit on the Iron Throne, maybe. But honestly, who cares? I, I have so little interest now. I mean, I'll watch it. I mean, I've been, I've been invested so much, I'm not going to not watch it. Uh, I have very little interest in the prequel series. I might check out an episode, see what it's like. But, oh, man, what a waste. What a waste. Oh, 
Uh, so fine, let's let's start getting into the episode a little bit. What what WTF? Ari okay, Aria, Aria Stark. Just make up your damn mind. Is she this incredible faceless assassin? Who, who you know? Hey, the whole transformation of, of of Aria I found interesting and really really engaging. And then when they jump from her like finishing take uh, killing the waif back in uh, where was it? I can't even think straight. Where, wherever it was, Bravos, um, and then appearing again to kill out the to wipe out the phrase. Obviously, something had happened to, in her training that she became a this incredible superhero, faceless man assassin, right? And I was like, fine, okay. There's something happened off screen. Uh, that might be an interesting movie they could do. <laughs> you know, that could bring her from one to the other. And I accepted of that. I didn't mind her having the kill shot on the Night King. Um, yeah, and, uh, but and now and now she's a scared running girl. Like, how did she survive that? For, it, it was, it was, uh, it was again so so dissatisfying. Kit Harrington um, described the season finale or the end of the end of Game of Thrones as disappointing. Can't argue with him. I think think you got think you hit the nail on the head there, Kit. Um. Clegg and Bowl went exactly as you would expect. Uh, Cersei, Cersei did not get the comeuppance that we all wanted. We all wanted Aristarch to kill her, to whip off Jaime's face and kill her. Uh, obviously, Tyrion's going to be toast next week for letting out Jaime. Uh, that's probably that might be the catalyst that makes Jon Snow take out um, Daenerys and. Yeah, I'm sure the, these beats are the same in the are going to be the same if the novels ever come out. But it's gonna be so much more layered and complex. Although I don't even think this thing is gonna be. I just I'm I'm I'm, I'm breathtaking at how how simplistic this was, how predictable this was. Again, this was like written by average TV writers. Oh, so sad. It's so sad. You know, this is a franchise killer. I keep saying it. And, and I'm recording this before I've seen any fan reaction. I haven't gone on social media yet. I can't imagine. I just cannot imagine there's going to be much division. I, I don't know how anybody will be able to defend this episode. Uh, as I said, Cersei's comeuppance was dissatisfying. Did, is she even dead? Who knows? Who cares? I thought she was supposed to be killed by little brother. Or whatever the it was in High Valyrian from a prophecy. Uh, I normally I sit down, I write notes about what I'm going to talk about, but really, what what was it? What's the point? What's the point? <laughs> yeah, it's, everything was so predictable, so predictable. In fact, that I'm part of the predictability in that my fat old guy in his basement screaming about how how this has been screwed up. You know, so I, even um. Part of this predictable, boring trope. Oh dear, dear, dear! Like, I, yeah, I guess. Well, let's let's finish this out. We'll watch next week. But boy, it's like pulling teeth now. What a shame! I am Svila Petkin, the rabbi from another planet. And please, if you feel like me, or if you don't feel like me, find solace, find rancor, find find satisfaction in your soul by subscribing to me. Go on, go ahead, subscribe, like the video, ring the little bell thing, let me know what you think. Actually, you know, I'm really intrigued to see if there's going to be, like, bonkers defenders of this, you know, because like, I see that so much in fandom. You know, like, especially Star Trek fans are, like, really wacko, like, on both sides. Like, this is going a bit on a tangent, but there's some significant problems with Star Trek Discovery, but if you mention them, people go batty. So I'm intrigued to see... If they got this like insane rabid defenders happen for this, I, I just I'm, I'm, I'm like, what? On earth, how on earth are they going to defend this? Yeah. You know, after the episode finished, uh, David Benoff came up and started waffling, and I, I was like, I wanted to hit him in the face. I was like, who cares what you've got to say, idiot? Yeah. You know, and I don't think he really cares either, because why would he care? He's got his other job. He's off to do Star Wars movies, which I also don't care about now. You know, obviously the. Um, they're, they're they're not the talent that I I thought they were. They're obviously not. I mean, if you're working from a really really good piece of source material, they're probably pretty good. But when they're off on their own, this is what we get: bland, 
basic, boring franchise killer. I am Sula Beckin, the rabbi from another planet. Thank you for listening. Thank you.